Okay, hello. In this video, I want to show you how you can make your own custom font for Unity. Uh, Unity it, in Unity, you're able to make your own uh, custom font, but it can be kind of confusing at first. I know when I was trying to do it, I was a bit confused, which is why I'm making this video, because it's the kind of video I wish I had when I was uh, trying to figure this out. So, here I am in Photoshop. And this is uh, what I want. This is the uh, font that I want in, uh, to use in my game in Unity. And as you can see, it's just uh, the digits from 0 to 9. You have 1, 2, I mean 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's in a, it looks like a digital clock font. I know they have fonts already out there, but I kind of just want to make my own just to see, uh, because it's, it, you just, it just feels better when you make your own sometimes. And uh, so I made, this in I made this in Photoshop and now I, all, you need to do, all you need to do from here is export it as a PNG. And uh, it's, I've already done that, so I won't do that right now. But now, since after you create your font, I mean, you can have it in any order you want. It doesn't have to be. It could be on a single row. I put it. I put it up in uh, two rows, as you can see, uh, just because uh, there's an issue you'll run into uh, if you that you'll see when you get there in uh, Unity. And okay, so let's so now they have your file, save it as PNG, like I said before, and let's switch over to Unity. Okay, so here we are in Unity. Uh, I'm just showing you the uh, important parts of the of the screen, so the whole screen. This is where you're going to be uh, creating your font. And so all we need to do in order to create our custom font, we need to import the PNG file that we created in Photoshop. We need to make a material using that PNG image. And then we need to create a font and using that material. And then we need to specify all of the uh, values uh, for the font. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's actually really simple. But it, sometimes when you're first doing this, it can be kind of confusing and if it's hard to find some uh, good tutorials. Since a lot of times people are just, you know, using some sort of uh, software that you got to pay for. And so, yeah, I know, and I know I'm using Photoshop and that's, but you, can, you don't have to use Photoshop. Anything that that's, uh, that you uh, use to create, that can create a PNG is fine. So the first thing I want to do is import our PNG, and, and as you see, I I've created all these uh, folders to keep things organized, which is recommended. And so here I have my sprites folder. I'll go in there, and I will import new asset, which brings me to where I usually keep uh, images that I create, and I choose my one I just created, there it is, digital clock text. And so, the next, now once we have that, we just need to create a, create a material. We just right click in my materials folder, but you could do it anywhere. Uh, this is just so I stay organized. And go down to material, and we'll give it a name. Matt digital text, okay. Now in the inspector over here, we're going to underneath the title main maps right there. There's this word called albedo or albedo. I don't know how to pronounce that or really what that means, but you can click on the uh, bullseye next to it. Click your text image and you now have a material that's using your text image. You could also come up here under the shader and go to GUI text shader. And I haven't really, 
I don't know what the difference between uh, those two are, but they accomplish the same thing. So as far as I know, I'm sure this way knows what the difference is, but I don't. I've, I've only been using Unity for a couple of months, so I still have a lot to learn. But anyway, now we need to create our fonts. So we go to our fonts, and these are just some of the other fonts that I was using. And we will right click, and we're going to create, and all the way down here is custom font. Do that, and we name it digital text font, I don't know, something like that. Now, over here in our inspector, we need to uh, give it a size. <coughs> That's just going to be the how many characters you have in your image. Uh, I'm only using the number 0 through 9, so I would have 10. Uh, my size would be 10. If you had also uppercase, uh, alpha, yeah, uppercase alphabet and the lowercase alphabet, then that would be 62 characters. And then if you had a bunch of other punctuation uh, and special symbols or whatever, then you could it could very easily get up into like a hundred. Uh, I guess that's what using this other software is. That's where you see the benefit of using the other software because it takes all of this uh, tedious work out. Um, but if you only have these ten digits, then you don't really need other software. As soon as you type in the the size, you're going to get all these elements. I typed in ten, so I got ten elements. And now we're going to need to fill them in. The first important bit that you want to fill in is this uh, variable called index. The index corresponds to the ASCII code that that digit uh, corresponds to. So if you look, at, if you just Google uh, ASCII code, you you'll see an ASCII code sheet which will tell you uh, what uh, which number or symbol, uh, which code corresponds to which ASCII symbol, basically. And so if you look it up, you'll see that zero, which is going to be our element zero, uh, corresponds to the ASCII code 48. I mean, you have to look it up. You, I mean, you, you can't just, it's not intuitive. You're not going to know. And then from here on out, I mean, this element one is going to be uh, the our digit one that's correspond to 49, and then two corresponds to uh, 50, and so on. I'm not going to fill them all out right now. I'm just going to I'll do that off camera. And the next important bit, we'll go back up to our element, element zero, is something called UV. UV. This is in I don't know off the top of my head what this means. What this is, but all I know is that the width in height has to be between zero and one. Now you now you find find these out by taking the number of uh, your the number of images you have on each axis. So the width would be on the x axis. And so in my image I have my image is five by two. I have five images on the x axis. Now I take that, 5, and I invert it. So 1 divided by 5 is 0.2. So this would be 0.2. Now my height I have is the y-axis. I have two images. I have basically two rows. If you think about columns of rows, I have two rows. So I take the inverse of 2, which is 1 half, 0.5. And that's going to be the same for every every uh, element you have here. The width and height are going to be 0.2 and 0.5. Okay. If you only had one row, then your height would just be one. Okay. And so you just take the number. Is it, I mean, you just take the number of elements you have for each dimension and you invert it. So one divided by five is 0.2. One divided by was 0.5. And then the x and y, uh, we multiply the, for, so for x, if you think of the x as the columns, so the leftmost, 
the leftmost part of the image is a column zero. It's all zero based, so column zero, then column one, two, three, and four. Then I then as you if you remember in my in the image I have zero to be the top left corner of my image. So that's in column zero. So I take zero, multiply multiply it by width, which is remains zero. And now the height is a bit now the height is different. This is a bit strange because uh, you would think that the that the rows are counted from the top to bottom. So you would think that the top left corner would be row zero, and then the one below that would be row one. But for some reason, it's actually reversed. The very bottom row is row zero, and the row above that is row one. And so my number zero is actually in the second row, or row one. And so I take one and multiply, multiply it by the height, which is 0.5, and I put 0.5 there. It's strange, but that's the way it is. Okay, and the next part is this uh, vert uh, variable. And as you see, it also has x, y, and the width and height. Uh, we won't, you don't need to deal with x and y that much as if you want your character to have some sort of offset in the x and y direction. I mean, I'll, we'll just keep it for zero for us. Uh, you, but you can play around with it and see what it does. But what we really care about right now is the width and height. The width and height uh, is the actual width and height of each character in pixels. And so in, in, my, in my image, each character is 128 pixels wide and 173 pixels high. And you notice I put a negative. You have to put a negative in here for the y, I mean, for the height. Uh, I don't know exactly why. But I'm just. This is just what it says from the documentation that uh, this has to be a negative number. And so and that's going to be true for all of my characters. So so let's go down to element one. So again, we want. So again, we want to fill in the x and y for the uv variable. So for one is in the second column, which corresponds to the index 1. So I take 1 times 0.2, which is 0.2. And we know that the top row is the second row, and so we take 1 times 0.5, which is 0.5. And this is doesn't, this doesn't change. Oh, 173. Another important, important note that I forgot about was this advance. If you, if you don't put a number for this advance, keep it 0, then all the numbers that you draw will appear on top of each other. You have to specify how many pixels you want to advance the character so it appears next next to the one just before it. And so you got to kind of play around with it. And I determined that I like 140 for this for these characters. Okay, so let's look at the uh, let's look at this one. The third element, which is cor which corresponds to the number two, is still on the. Okay, so now we're it's the third column. So well, the point two is does, point five doesn't change. And so, and so it's in the third column. So we have to multiply the width times two, which is going to be point four, and this is going to be point five because it's on the second row. And then this doesn't change. I mean, once you have it down, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. It's just really tedious. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill out the rest out. Hopefully that makes sense more or less, and I'll get it all filled out. Okay, so what I, so I got it all filled out here from all the elements from zero to nine with the correct information. One thing I didn't point out before, which I should have pointed out in the beginning, was I need to set out set the material here. As you can see, it's set to none. 
but we need to set it to our uh, mat digital that we created earlier. That way it knows which material to use for the font. And so now that's done, we're done creating our font. That's all we needed to do. So now we just need to apply it. We need to apply our fonts to something. Let's, let's apply it to our score counter, which is right here. Um, it says a thousand, so let's go over here into Inspector. And as you can see, we see under character, there's font. We're using something called Space Bomber right now. We will change it to our digital text. And as you can see, it's quite large. And we can't, I mean, we can't use this font size to decrease it. That's not going to make any difference. Uh, what we're going to need to do is just change the scale. Let's do 0 0.25. 0 0.25. And then we'll move it up. It looks pretty good. It's a good size. And you kind of want to play around with the numbers to see if you got all of the, uh, if you got the mapping correct. 8, 7, 2, 1. 0, 3, 4, 5, and it looks pretty good. 1, 0, 2, 3. So that's basically it. That's basically all you gotta do to create your own font uh, using any image you want and without you know paying for you know expensive software except for Photoshop but you could use any other uh, image editing program I mean, as long as you don't need Photoshop, basically. I just, I'm, it's very convenient and I just happen to have it. Anyway, that's it. Now let's actually apply it, see how it works inside an actual game. Okay, so I showed you how to create your own font uh, using any image that you want. And now let's see it in action in an actual game. So you'll see the font appear in the top right corner that we created. So let's push play. Here we go. We just hit play here. And as you can see, it's set to zero. So and it the font is working correctly, as we would expect. It's incrementing correctly. It's at 50 now. Six. Oh, wait. Now it's 106. So, we're good to go. And we could use it in our game if we want. Or we're just there. Okay, 256. Anyway, that's it. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it was useful. And uh, if it was, let me know. And I'll see you later. Bye.